Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be discussing Sticks by George Saunders. Um, I'm going to give you a quick plot overview. It's pretty simple. Um, a dad dresses up a metal pole and does so in increasingly obscure ways for in increasingly obscure holidays. Uh, then he dies and his children sell his house. The couple that buys the house from the children then throws away his pole. And that's the plot. It's incredibly basic. Um, but there's a lot of meaning behind it. And we'll we'll get to that when we analyze the theme. Uh, but really quickly, I'd like to just go over the context for the story. Uh, I feel like it's important to, you know, analyze a context whenever you can. Um, so this is from the contributors notes where... Styx was originally published uh, in Story Magazine, and Saunders writes, For two years I'd been driving past a house like the one in the story, imagining the owner is a man more joyful and self-possessed and less self-conscious than myself. Then one day I got sick of him and invented his opposite, and there was the story. All right, so that's the context for you. Um, let's look at some themes, and to do this we're going to need to draw examples from the text, um, starting with uh, Super Bowl week. Super Bowl week, the pole was dressed up in a jersey and Rod's helmet, and Rod had to clear it with Dad if he wanted to take the helmet off. Uh, Rod being one of Dad's kids, uh, Rod being a, you know, presumably a football player, um, he has to sacrifice his helmet for his dad to dress it up, dress up a pole, right? You could already start to see the absurdity and like the the friction it might cause a family to have that happen, um, and Rod has to ask his dad to have his helmet back if he wants to go play football or do whatever because uh, the pole is sacred, right? So that's the that's the first place that we're starting with, like really understanding what's going on here. Um, dad obviously has an obsession with this pole. And what is that obsession? Well, basically it's, it's coping with a lack of control, or at least that's where, what I get out of it. And, um, the next place this is, this is evident is we were allowed a single Crayola from the box at a time. Um, that's a control issue easily, why were they only allowed one at a time? Because whatever it is, the father obviously has some sort of um, obsession with only allowing them certain things. This is continued uh, literally in the next sentence saying, one Christmas Eve, he shrieked at Kimmy for wasting an apple slice. Um, and then directly after that, he hovered over us as we poured our ketchup saying, good enough, good enough, good enough, good enough. And like that level of control desire the need for control obviously like suggests that there's a lack of control elsewhere in in dad's life and this is obviously a fairly sympathetic view of the character and that's what i mean i would personally want to see uh that's why the way that i'm analyzing it more or less but he he clearly isn't great to his children and it stems from a need for control over over his own life and we don't really ever get where the lack of control is coming from maybe he has a shitty job maybe he's you know uh under a lot of pressure outside of his home life maybe he just sucks who knows but he definitely needs control right so that's that's one of the major themes is the need for control and the outlet for it right is is the pole and so this is um this is seen where he starts getting increasingly um, obsessed and, and obscured with his decorations and his celebrated holidays. So obviously it just started with like 4th of July, Veterans Day, Halloween. Um, but then it goes into, you know, Groundhog Day where he's draping some sort of fur and casting a shadow with a floodlight to ensure that the groundhog sees his shadow, which is even more control. Um, 
And then the next the next example is in the next sentence. When an earthquake struck Chile, he lay the pole on its side and spray painted a rift in the earth. Um, that's intense. That's really cool. Uh, and you could see like the creativity of his outlet is obviously um, maybe not conventionally productive, but and this is me being evaluative. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, obviously. But he. Um, he is creating with the lack of his control. And so his um his wife dies, their mom, the narrator's mom. Um and he dresses the pole as death. And that's where it gets a little bit darker. And obviously it's been dark. The the whole tone is like uh a little bit a little bit dark and you feel a little bit bad for him the whole time, or at least that's how I feel. Um but he starts using it more and more as a shrine. Uh, I mean, first of all, dressing up the a, a pole, a metal pole, as your dead wife to do what? What are you doing there? Well, it's you're coping. There's nothing else that you could be doing other than coping. And, it, it, you know, whatever works for you, I can't say that there's anything wrong with that. But obviously, like, this, this guy is not in control of his own life. Um, it's further driving home the theme of like lack of control mainly, um, and the coping mechanism that you use to do so, uh, right. And it just gets worse from there. But one winter he covers the, um, the pole with cotton swabs for warmth and gave it kids, gave it offspring by hammering in six cross sticks around the yard. Um, that's super dark i mean maybe the character maybe the sticks are also characters maybe they're not um but to him they definitely are and he is just totally reinventing his life built around a pole and some sticks and it's it is disturbing in a way um but what comes next is slightly re redeeming and he uh he's starts to run lengths of string between the poles uh, pole and sticks and taped all the strings are apologies admissions of error pleas for understanding um he has a he has a sign saying love and another one saying forgive and with a question mark obviously and then he dies um which sucks uh in the hall with the radio on and then they sell the house the kids sell the house uh to the couple who take the pole and take the sticks and throw them away and that's the end of the story right and overall like just to illustrate the themes of lack of control is how we went through that line by line um let's just take a look at the characters real quick there's only a few named ones um there's Rod, Kimmy, the narrator, which is a first-person narrator, um, dad and mom, who are, by the end of the story, both dead, and the new neighbors, right? Those are the characters. Um, so I want to make some connections here. Uh, it's important whenever you're, you know, digesting a story or any literature that you you really like. And you, you might be doing this subconsciously when you read anyways, but it's good to always connect it to yourself, to um, another text or something, maybe pop cultural, um, I'll get to that, um, and then to the world in some capacities, very basic, uh, text to self, text to text, and text to world analysis, and uh, you don't always have to do it, but and you are probably doing it anyways, but... Um, my text to self for this is my dad, uh, growing up had a pond, not growing up in his life, growing up in my life, my dad had a pond, um, and he would after work go and spend an hour, maybe half hour, maybe an hour and a half out by the pond, just sitting at it. Um, whenever there were ducks on the pond, he would get super excited. He would, he stocked it with fish. I think we had bass, uh, an accidental walleye got in there didn't last long probably there's some grass carp uh he still has the pond today it's part of his little life and he loves it he loves his pond it's a way for him to control his environment and to create his own existence and i think that a lot of people do have this um that's that's my relationship to to my childhood growing up is like it, say i was the narrator in the situation my dad's my dad's pole and my dad's sticks were his pond and it wasn't 
for me, nearly as destructive as the dad in this case seems to be towards his family and not, again, intentionally destructive, but it left an impact on his children because they were treated as inferior to the pole where in my situation, my dad didn't treat me inferior to the pond. He shared it. Even we, there was a boat that we would go out on the pond with and just puddle around, paddle around. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, so the text to text analysis, I don't actually have really a, a book that I could connect this to or another short story that I can connect this to offhand. I didn't spend a whole ton of time thinking about one for a specific reason, um, because this is literally an episode of Seinfeld. Uh, George's dad is a bit of a crazy person. I mean, everybody in Seinfeld, if you've ever seen the show, they are all mentally ill in some way, shape or form. George's dad for Christmas, instead of um, getting putting up a Christmas tree, puts up the Festivus pole, right? It's literally a metal pole. It literally serves like the same device as this pole where he puts up the pole. And one of the traditions is, I mean, you you obviously are going to decorate the pole for Christmas. He doesn't go as far as in other like seasons and Thanksgiving and the Super Bowl and whatever and Groundhog Day. He doesn't do that. But for Christmas, um, George's dad, Frank, dresses up the pole and they celebrate Christmas with a feats of strength. And basically the feats of strength for Festivus is George's dad kind of beating him up a little bit and just roughhousing, wrestling, whatever. They don't like come to blows or anything, but George as a kid always hated it. And well, what's really going on in that episode is, um, Frank is a man that doesn't have very much control over his own life. Um, and I mean, obviously neither does George. If you've ever seen the show, he's a walking disaster, but he, Frank, exercises his control in a way where he's a denouncing a holiday. That's the first thing that he's doing. And B he's exerting his will over his child, um, in a very similar way to the way that, uh, dad from sticks is controlling his children where, I mean, his son Rod had to ask his dad to get his own helmet back from the pole. Cause the pole took priority where, yeah, Frank Costanza is asserting his will in the same way over George by making George obviously do something that he doesn't like, meaning the uh, the feats of strength for Festivus, right? And then, I guess for a text-to-world analysis, uh, society is a creation machine, and we all create everything. I'm making a YouTube video right now. You're probably doing something like playing the guitar, um, playing chess, doing sports of some sort, running a race, you know, cooking, um, literally anything that you're doing that produces something. I mean, architecture, you know, craftsmanship, all things that humans do. It's one of the few qualities that we all share is this weird collective of human nature, um, is creativity and creation. And, um, sometimes though creating, uh, takes, takes precedence over our social lives, over our relationships. And sometimes we, we do what dad is doing in this story and we push things that are maybe more important to the side in favor of our creative preferences and our creative ideas. Um, and really like we're coming to the end of this, but I always want to, um, either wrap up or begin depending on the, uh, the story that we're looking at with my favorite sentence. And in this case, obviously we're, uh, we're going to wrap up with it, but my favorite sentence, um, of this story is right at the beginning. Um, let me find it real quick. The pole was dad's only concession to glee. And that's typifies the whole story in my eyes where he does take immense pleasure in the pole. He loves decorating it. He loves spending time with it. And he loves structuring his own reality around it. The pole was dad's only concession to glee. 
and I guess that's where we'll leave it. Um, thank you very much for watching. This is my first video, in case you guys didn't know. Um, and I'm grateful for having some eyes on it. Definitely leave a comment. Uh, tell me what I could do better, what, I, what you would like to see more of. Um, thanks so much.